はい、えー、それでは、えー、G7 広島サミットにおける、えー、グローバルインフラ投資パートナーシップ、えー、PGII に関するサイドイベントを開始したいと思います、えー、昨年エルマウサミットで我々 G7 首脳は世界のインフラ投資ギャップを埋めるべくさまざまな主体と連携をし5年間で最大6000億ドルの官民資金を世界のインフラ投資に動員していくことを表明しました。我々はインフラ投資を通じ、パートナー国とともにクリーンなエネルギーを広め、気候変動にも強い社会を作り、サプライチェーンを強化し、デジタル技術と交通インフラで人々をつなぎ、誰一人取り残さない社会の実現を目指しますさらにこうした投資は透明かつ公正な形で実施をしパートナー国の持続可能な開発に貢献してまいります日本はベトナムやエジプトで風力発電所を建設しインドバングラデシュやフィリピンで高速鉄道地下鉄港や港湾横断道路を整備しますさらに気候変動に脆弱な国々への支援、食料安全保障、中小企業や女性への支援のために、JICA による合計40億ドルの、40億ドル規模の融資の枠を新たに設けます。本日は各国首脳ののほか世界有数の機関投資家や総合商社、国際開発金融機関の代表にもご参加いただきました、ここにいる皆さんとともに、このパートナーシップをさらに推進していく決意を新たにしたいと思います。それでは本イベントの共催者であるバイデン大統領及びフォンデアライエン委員長に発言をお願いしたいと思います。まずはバイデン大統領に発言をお願いいたします。Well, thank you very much,、uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Nearly one year ago,、uh, we made a commitment to commit not only to build a better infrastructure, but to build a better future,、uh, one rooted in opportunity, security, and prosperity for all. And thanks to all the public and private partners around this table, many more around the world, we've already begun to deliver. Together, We've initiated quality and sustainable infrastructure projects across Africa, Asia, and the Americas. And we're strengthening our shared climate security, health security, and food security, and economic security. All four are critical. We started to、uh, engage more private investors to better de risk and leverage additional capital. And I see at least two from the United States here that are de risking a lot. <laughs> Um, and I'm proud to announce that the United States has already mobilized more than $30 billion in investments to date. And we're just getting started. Together, we have a lot of work to do to close the infrastructure gap and for, in low and middle income countries. And as we begin the next year, our partnership,、uh, we need to find new ways, new ways to maximize investments, our investments. That's why moving forward, The United States will enhance our focus on investing in key economic corridors. In practice, that means making game changing investments in regions that could lead to positive impacts across multiple sectors in multiple countries. We've already started working with our partners to make this happen. For example, in Sub Saharan Africa, the U.S. Development Finance Corporation is looking to invest in its first railway project、uh, on the continent. A rail line would extend from the western shores of Angola to the border of the DRC and Zambia, with the goal of ultimately reaching the Indian Ocean, connecting the continent east to west for the first time. This project would not only quickly promote trade and create jobs, over time, in my view, it will strengthen supply chains. 
incentive, incentivize investments in agriculture and promote food security. And it was going to enable, in my view, us to better access clean energy and digital connectivity across the entire region, creating more security, more prosperity, more opportunities for generations to come. That's what our focus on the key economic corridors is all about, investing in near-term solutions that pay long-term dividends. It's not only in Africa. We're starting similar work in Costa Rica, Ecuador, Indonesia, and other places I won't bore you with now. Let me close with this. During the G7 meeting, we're addressing a range of issues. Climate change, food security, gender inequality, economic resilience, digital connectivity, and global security. We're tracking these challenges together, and I think we're beginning to make some important progress. But if we don't move to do more to strengthen infrastructure in low- and middle-income countries, if we don't do more to help nations deliver opportunities and prosperity for their people, our impact is going to be limited. That's how, the crit how critical this partnership is. That's how important our investments are. So today, as we begin the PGII's second year, let's all find ways to maximize our investment. Maximize it, because it will do a lot not only for that particular undertaking, but it has an impact across the entire region, in my view. And uh, to unlock even more public and private capital. And together, let's recommit to showing that democracies can deliver. Let me say it again. Democracies can deliver. We have to deliver to people around the world. I want to thank you all for your partnership and leadership in this vital issue. And now I'm going to turn it back to the Prime Minister. Thank you. Hi, Joe, thank you. Next, Mr. Von der Leyen, Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, a pleasure to see you here. Indeed, it has been described PGII, an initiative of $600 billion, top quality infrastructure where Europe is proud to contribute half of it. We want eyes-level partnership with the partner countries. We want to find solutions to the real challenges low- and middle-income countries are facing today. And we want to be part of the investments in infrastructure projects that bring good jobs and lasting growth, and very important, they create value locally. Now, to reach this goal, we need the private sector so this could take us from the billions to the trillions. We need you, and that's why we're here today. I know that you want to know that we are in this for the long haul. Yes, this is for sure we are in this for the long haul. And we want to work with our country, um, partner countries in a way that we have full transparency, strengthen the regulatory environment, and develop skills. I know that such a conducive and regulatory um, uh, clear environment is essential for you to have the necessary predictability and security for capital investment. Global Gateway, the European part of this initiative, has started 90 projects worldwide so far. Let me share just three examples. In Namibia, Namibia we are providing guarantees for private investments in green hydrogen. The goal here is twofold, ensure clean energy for the country itself and generate new revenues for the country in a way that it is able to export the green hydrogen, for example, to the European Union. In Rwanda, we are working with a vaccine producer to bring the mRNA technology to Rwanda so that in this country, together with you, the private sector, the country is able to produce the life-saving vaccines for the region. In the Philippines, we are co connecting our Copernicus satellite to build the first Earth observation system in Southeast Asia. And Nokia, who is with, with us today here, is investing in the 4G and 5G infrastructure. So here, the corporation will support national and regional capacities to tackle the impact of climate change and improve disaster risk management. So these were a few brief examples for the incredible power um, that public-private partnership can unleash. And I'm glad to announce that we are now mobilizing an extra 4 billion euros 
in loans for the Asian and Pacific regions. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the G7 partnership is our effort to be part of the solution to the infrastructure investment gap. We want to put a better offer on the table. If we are in a race, we are in a race to the top, and we will continue to work after Hiroshima in the next, with the next presidencies of G7 in Italy and in 2025 in Canada. So happy to have you on board, and I want to invite you already to the first Global Gateway Forum in Brussels in October this year. Thank you for joining us. はい、え、まずはありがとう。え、続きまして本日は、え、各国首脳のほか、え、共済国から4名の民間関係者及び世界銀行が参加しています。え、まずは、え、日本から、ま、世界中の民間のノウハウと官民の、ま、資金をつな
financing of a $125 million revolving credit facility to support female entrepreneurs in uh, Kenya, Gabon, in Nigeria, and the DRC. Um, our efforts extend around the world. That includes a $450 million sustainability link bond, which is increasing digital access in Costa Rica, and the financing for a $350 million wind farm in northeast Brazil. And President Widudu, um, we are also helping finance a $400 million green bond to support geothermal power in Indonesia. We're proud of this work that we do around the world, but we know that much more needs to be done. Uh, and we certainly welcome the efforts to reform multilateral development banks. To be clear, however, um, more MDB financing, just to use the same way, is not going to get us where we need to be. Instead, it's about how to use MDB financing to catalyze private capital. And there's a couple of different ways and ideas that we could deploy in the near term. The first is incentivizing private capital. We need to reduce the hurdles that frequently restrict the ability to bring private capital to the table. So that's aligning things like the global interpretation of Basel capital rules and country regulations around the world. It's a tad complex today. Um, by aligning the global interpretation of these rules will help us lower capital treatment requirements um, so that uh, those associated with MDB risk mitigation will enable more private capital in non-investment grade assets, which is the most critical piece here, to flow in so what is currently a trickle can become a sustainable materialable flow. The second is also just about sharing expertise. Led by the World Bank, let's bring together technical experts from both sides, so from the development banks and the financial institutions, so we can create more modern financial structures. Financial institutions such as City have capital markets and structuring expertise that MDBs don't have, whilst the MDBs have the geopolitical knowledge and project proficiency including vast amounts of performance decade, um, performance data over decades that could really reduce down risk and pricing, therefore, of these projects that the capital market side that we lack. So bringing this together would be very valuable. And it would be remiss of me if I didn't ask for actions to not only mobilize the capital, but to accelerate getting projects actually online. So permitting um, and the mundane but important activities such as streamlining documentation and contracts and standardizing them would make an enormous difference. So it's not that hard. I am confident that if we have stronger collaboration, we can create enduring and sustainable flows of capital from the private sector that would raise the economic futures of developing countries around the world. Thank you. Hi, Fraser. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, Your Excellencies. It's a pleasure to be here to represent uh, the digital technology industry. And thank you, President von der Leyen, for the invitation. I would like to share Nokia's perspective on how to make initiatives like uh, PGII and Global Gateway as impactful, impactful as possible. Digitalization and connectivity improve safety, productivity, efficiency, and sustainability. That's a fact. They are particularly effective in physical industries, such as agriculture and manufacturing, making them highly relevant in all developing economies. Transcontinental connectivity with subsea cables, such as Medusa in the Mediterranean Sea, or the planned Far North Fiber linking Japan, North America, Northern Europe, binds us together even more strongly. So, encouraging digitalization and connectivity in partnership with trusted, reliable actors should be one of the PGII's most important objectives. We should be asking ourselves, when any developing economy wants to invest in digital infrastructure or commit to digitalizing its economy, how can we make sure that G7 nations and their trusted vendors are the partners of choice?
A big part of the answer is financing. G7 economies have done tremendous work in getting initiatives like PGII and Global Gateway off the ground. They are the best channel to make financing competitive, attractive and joined up, and they can enable impact on a huge scale across sectors and continents. But we can still make the financial side of these initiatives even more attractive. Speaking for business, we would like development banks and export credit agencies from G7 nations to jointly develop attractive financing tools and offers to support trusted and sustainable infrastructure. So these tools and offers can become even more effective. I'm proud that Nokia is a partner for trusted digitalization. We are working closely with the European Commission to develop global gateway digital flagships to benefit countries, industries and communities. Please consider these projects alongside other pro digitalization opportunities with the urgency they deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I thank the G7 for inviting us to be part of this session. GIP, we are one of the largest uh, managers of infrastructure assets around the world. We have 100 billion of assets that we invest in companies in energy, transport, water and waste, and digital sectors. I should say we have substantial investment in every single one of the G7 countries, and I did warn Prime Minister uh, Trudeau that Canada is the exception, but we're working hard to rectify that. <laughs> we agree that mobilizing private capital is critical to addressing the urgent need for emerging market infrastructure investment. To date, together with our portfolio companies, we have invested over $15 billion of equity to provide critical infrastructure services in over 20 emerging market countries. In Asia, our Vina Energy Company is helping to tackle climate and energy security issues by building and operating three gigawatts of solar and wind farms in India, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Thailand. Our Outlast Renewable Energy Company is doing the same thing in Latin America, with over four gigawatts of operating and under construction solar plants in Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, and Colombia. Over the next 10 years, we at GIP aim to invest some $20 billion in businesses that will provide essential infrastructure in emerging market countries. Turning to how the G7 and PGII can turbocharge the flow of private capital into emerging market infrastructure, we have three suggestions. One is to provide a pool of capital to support an instrument which can be modeled after the World Bank's partial risk guarantee program that helps to lower the perceived risk of these investments through, for a fee, providing a G7 level backstop for some emerging market country obligations and undertakings. However, unlike the World Bank, apologies David, the program must be user-friendly, non-bureaucratic, quick-acting, nimble, and flexible. This will materially lower the cost of providing emerging market infrastructure investments. A second suggestion is to explore ways in which PGII can provide support for the development of critical financial products in emerging market countries. Things like longer tenor local currency financing and long-dated currency and interest rate hedges that will again help lower the cost and perceived risk of emerging market country investments. A third and fi final suggestion is to provide a forum for facilitating the regular flow of information about investment opportunities in emerging market countries and for educating private sector investors about the tools and instruments that are available from PGII to support these investments. We at GIP stand ready to support the G7 and G PGII in this important undertaking. Thank you very much. はい、え、運営し会長ご発言ありがとうございました。to create a dynamic investable asset class for infrastructure in developing countries that provides geographic and sectoral diversification. 
Climate infrastructure can clearly be an important portion of this asset class, as should be toll roads, electricity transmission assets, electricity distribution, and many types of water-related assets. All of these are currently underfunded, but would be attractive to investors if properly packaged. There are three main steps to achieve this, standards, verification of results, and standardization of contracts and techniques. Uh, this can make thousands of individual assets available to investors. An important early step is to converge on a set of measurement standards. There are many examples underway now. At the 2019 G20 Osaka Summit, the World Bank was a key part of creating the Quality Infrastructure Investment Partnership uh, effort. This will help mainstream QII principles in more than $22 billion of World Bank projects. Several different standards and tech taxonomies are under discussion for sustainability disclosure and climate finance. The A ASEAN taxonomy was offered as a model in Niigata last week. Uh, the ISSB and uh, the U.S. SEC have proposed sustainability reporting standards. The World Bank Group supports harmonization of standards to reduce cost and enhance transparency. And we have published uh, and been one of the first to publish comprehensive Paris alignment guidelines for our instruments and sectors. The second step is creating financing instruments with verifiable results uh, that make projects attractive and saleable to donors and investors. Investors want to invest, but they need to avoid greenwashing. At first, this can be done one innovation at a time, and we've done that with City, uh, as, uh, with the water purification bond, and in South Africa with the Black Rhino uh, bond. These are useful uh, starting points. To move to bigger projects focused on greenhouse gas emission reduction, we've launched uh, a multi-donor trust fund called SCALE that would bring concessional resources. And the third necessary step is standardization of contracts. This will allow risk diversification and can create a robust climate infrastructure asset class. Uh, we heard from uh, two of the investors the importance of having a forum and having uh, expertise uh, that shares knowledge on this. So with that, let me conclude on an important related issue. To become investable, countries need to do more to facilitate private capital. Uh, we are actively strengthening our support to enable private capital and pr strengthen private sectors. Uh, this involves a more holistic World Bank Group effort. For example, countries have been accustomed to holding their best assets in government enterprises. The World Bank, uh, IFC, and MEGA can combine their efforts to help make these assets more sustainable and marketable. Ideally, this is part of a country's overall effort to facilitate private capital inflows, including for climate. I want to thank Japan and all of you for the engagement. Thank you. はい、えー、マルバス総裁、ありがとうございました、えー、ここで招待国からジョコ大統領、アザリ大統領、ブラウン首相3人からご発言をいただきますまずインドネシア、ジョコ大統領発言をお願いいたします Terima kasih Perdana Menteri Kishida Yang mulia Pembangunan infrastruktur baik berupa Uh, seaport, uh, airport, kemudian jalan tol, kemudian power plant adalah agenda besar Indonesia dalam meletakkan fondasi kemajuan untuk menciptakan pemerataan dan meningkatkan daya saing bangsa. Sebelumnya pembangunan infrastruktur hanya terpusat di Pulau Jawa. Satu pulau dari 17 ribu pulau yang dimiliki oleh Indonesia, yang akhirnya berdampak pada 56 persen penduduk terkonsentrasi di Pulau Jawa, dan 58 persen aktivitas ekonomi juga terpusat di Pulau Jawa. Ketimpangan ini yang terus kita tekan melalui pembangunan 
infrastruktur di luar Pulau Jawa, baik berupa sekali lagi seaport, power plant, airport, jalan tol semuanya. Inilah yang eh, akan memunculkan sebuah pemerataan yang Indonesia sentris, termasuk di dalamnya adalah pembangunan Ibu Kota Baru Nusantara, kota berbasis hutan dan alam yang 70 persen adalah area hijau dan 80 persen sumber energinya berasal dari renewable energy. Ini adalah showcase transformasi Indonesia yang sangat terbuka untuk investasi dan kerjasama, baik di sektor transportasi, kesehatan, teknologi, pendidikan, pariwisata, dan pendanaannya untuk infrastruktur kami lakukan dari APBN, kemudian oleh juga BUMN, dan apabila IRR-nya baik, akan kita berikan kepada swasta atau investor. Oleh sebab itu, dukungan PGII bagi pembangunan infrastruktur di Indonesia sangat penting lewat investasi yang konkret dan pembiayaan inovatif lainnya. Mari berkolaborasi demi pemerataan dan kesejahteraan rakyat. Terima kasih. Hai, Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. En nom de l'Afrique, que j'ai l'honneur de représenter, je vous remercie beaucoup. Je vous félicite de la façon dont vous dirigez les travaux avec les résultats qu'on obtient et surtout ce thème dont on parle aujourd'hui, c'est un, un thème vraiment vital et qui concerne le monde entier, surtout l'Afrique. Donc, je vous remercie tous, les partenaires, bi, multi ou les privés, par rapport aux annonces que vous faites dans le cadre de l'investissement. Mais chez nous, en Afrique, on dit que trop de viande ne gâte pas la sauce. Il faut en rajouter un peu, c'est toujours mieux. Donc, euh, Monsieur le Premier ministre, merci beaucoup pour ce thème, qu'il s'agit des infrastructures. Je vous dire qu'en Afrique, nous sommes orientés vers ce projet, puisque je vous ai dit tout à l'heure que nous sommes dans la zone de libre-échange du continent africain qui nécessite des infrastructures, que ce soit les infrastructures routières, maritimes, aériennes, ou l'énergie, ou pourquoi pas le digital. Donc nous sommes très concernés par cette infrastructure-là, ces investissements, parce que nous sommes convaincus que c'est de quoi à pouvoir occuper nos jeunes pour essayer de les écarter des mains des rapaces qui les utilisent pour l'extrémisme. Le, Donc, si on investit, on encourage l'entrepreneuriat, ces jeunes-là, effectivement, ils seront occupés, on aura de la valeur ajoutée, et c'est tout le monde qui va en bénéficier. Donc, euh, je vous demanderai très sincèrement à ce que, euh, merci beaucoup pour les annonces, mais les secteurs privés qui s'installent en Afrique chez nous, qui fassent un partenariat avec nos entreprises, de façon à ce que il y ait une formation qui soit concrète dans le cadre de, de, de nous tous. Et ça peut encourager aussi justement les jeunes à s'investir dans l'entrepreneuriat et ça peut aussi dégager un peu l'administration de la lourdeur administrative. Donc, euh, encore une fois, je suis très sensible par rapport à ce thème, d'autant plus qu'il s'agit des infrastructures, il s'agit de l'énergie. Et parlant d'énergie, on parle du, du climat. Donc, euh, on sait tous le problème du climat. Mais on est en Afrique et surtout dans des pays insulaires qui sont très vulnérables par rapport à ce problème de climat. Et c'est pourquoi on investit dans le renouvelable. Mais vous nous excusez parce qu'il nous faut une transition pour pouvoir y arriver. Sinon, on va créer d'autres problèmes. Donc de ce côté-là, nous comptons beaucoup sur ce partenariat. Mais surtout, je voudrais insister sur l'administration. Des fois, on est confronté à une administration très lourde qui fait en sorte que quelquefois le projet ne peut pas finir, on est obligé encore de recommencer. Donc je dois insister sur ce problème-là parce que c'est très important. Et insister aussi, hein, j'ai entendu les investissements en Afrique, merci beaucoup, mais en Afrique il y a deux pays, il y a un pays qui s'appelle un pays continent et un pays insulaire. Donc là, tout investissement, on doit tenir compte de ses spécificités. Il y a un pays qui s'appelle les Comores, qui est insulaire par rapport aux autres pays amis ou frères, mais insulaire aussi entre les îles. Donc là-bas, les infrastructures, ça concerne non seulement les routes, mais aussi il faut l'aérien, 
il faut le maritime. Et aussi, on est confronté à un phénomène. On fait une route, il y a la mer qui monte, il y a les montagnes qui descend, donc il va falloir en tenir compte lorsqu'on investit, sinon c'est de l'argent qu'on perd. Mais il faut en tenir compte de ces éléments là de façon à ce que cet investissement soit fait, qu'il soit durable et qu'il soit au, 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 au profit hein, de nous tous par rapport à ça. En tout cas, encore une fois, merci de cet engagement. Et je vous rassure que l'Afrique, on est disposé à essayer de faire en sorte que ce partenariat soit durable, il soit stratégique et dans l'intérêt de nous et de vous tous, que ce soit les partenaires et surtout les partenaires privés. Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Thank you, Prime Minister. Let me reinforce also the message by two previous leaders and give you a specific perspective on uh, infrastructure investment. There are a number of things that conspire to make infrastructure investment in the Pacific Islands difficult. One is the small population of many of our countries, the micro-economies, which make the return on investment very difficult to recoup, the distance. In my country of the Cook Islands, the distance from the main island to the northernmost island is the same distance as London to Rome. This is just one of the countries. And also the diseconomies of scale. It means that capital investment in infrastructure on a per capita basis is disproportionately high for Pacific Island countries. Too often we see the trade-off between infrastructure development and fiscal space because of the debt burden that often accompanies infrastructure investment. When we do invest, what this does on our balance sheet is the depreciation value adds again to our balance sheet, which gives us a disproportionate or distorts our balance sheets for us. The cost of not doing this uh, infrastructure investment, such as sealing a runway on one of our islands, it doesn't matter whether you're sealing it for 1,000 people or 100,000 people, the cost is still the same. But if you don't do that, then what you see is the population on these remote islands becoming part of the migrant labor force that moves to other countries to find work. And in our country, like uh, the other two countries, you're not just looking at one airstrip that you have to seal. In my country, we have to look at 10 airstrips that we have to seal. So the cost is replicated, it's magnified, and that's just for connectivity. We're also talking about digital connectivity with either satellite or cable. We're looking at replicating power generation on each of these small island communities. Uh, it's important then for the G7 and partners to look at tailoring the type of support that you can provide for small microeconomies in order for them to be able to participate in uh, the main centers economic growth in order for these small communities to earn a living so they don't have to leave the country. Thank you, Prime Minister. はい、え、ブラウン首相ありがとうございました。え、それでは最後に招待国の声を受けて、G7首脳からの発言をお願いしたいと思います。え、ただあの予定の時間過ぎておりますんで、G7からの発言はできる限り短くお願いしたいと思
créer de bons emplois, protéger l'environnement et favoriser l'égalité des genres. Et on doit le faire partout dans le monde. Euh, C'est pourquoi on est rassemblés aujourd'hui, euh, parce que là, on en a le plus besoin. On va pouvoir avoir le plus d'impact. Merci. Hey, Justin, merci. Et ensuite, Doitz, Scholz, Thank you. So we launched last year this initiative in uh, Elmau, and uh, it uh, works really well since then. And thank you, Fumio, for your leadership and, uh, and, and acti activity to make this something that is uh, continuously making progress. It is very important that we meet to get today to continue with all the activities. It's about mobilizing public but also and mostly private capital for direct investment into the countries. And it is necessary that we do it within this framework because it creates the environment, the ecosystem where such investments can take place. And this is why I really think we should put our different initiatives together so there is also this G20 a compact with Africa, which is important to convince um, countries that there is a an environment necessary for this way of investment. And if we are continuously working into this direction, I think this will be very, very good. Thank you. Hi, Olaf, thank you. Thank you very much, Fumio. Um, the PGAI uh, uh, is a concrete, intelligent, a serious way of cooperating with low- and middle-income countries with a non-predatory approach. Uh, investment infrastructures, they guarantee a higher multiplier than those in current expenditures and they foster a concrete development for the future of these nations. And that is why Italy has guaranteed its support through the EU Global Gateway, uh, focusing moreover on Africa with two projects in connectivity areas that form part of our MATE plan for Africa. And um, the first area is energy. Uh, in this regard, the Helmet submarine cable, which connects the electricity produ production of Italy and Tunisia, is a significant project, and it is part of the Italian strategy to invest in energy production in Africa. And the second area is data. In this context, I wish to recall at least two projects, the Blue Raman, which connects the Indo-Pacific with Europe and North Africa, creating an important connection system between three continents and the already recalled uh, Medusa optical fiber cable, uh, which significantly enhances internet connectivity for North African University and supports the training of Africa in a concrete way. We strongly believe in this approach, and this issue will be one of the priorities of the Italian presidency of G7 in 2024. Hi, え、象徴的なイベントとなりました。え、我が国は5年間で650億ドル以上のインフラ支援と民間資金の動員に向けてアジア、アフリカ、太陽州を含め世界各地でインフラ投資を進めてきています。え、引き続き皆さんと協力し
はい、ありがとうございました。